What is happening, guys? Cowboy here, and we are back, ready to go take on the next boss. So I had actually uh, made a first attempt against the boss, and was trying to explain stuff in the middle of the fight, and got one shot. So, decided I would just restart the video over, um, just because that's not very becoming of a walkthrough. But either way, uh, I also went and checked on that crystal lizard. It still wasn't there, so I have a feeling that it probably died in the scuffle with the... Uh, dragon that was being controlled by Abyss. Dodge you. I'm gonna go on up and get Egon of Karim, bring him along. And this boss has two phases. The first phase, some really strong attacks that it can do. Um, second phase, though, things get a little bit trickier. Um, those things you see flying are Chaos Butterflies, and those will get involved in the fight. Don't ask me where the name came from, that's just what they're called. Um, but anyway, uh, they'll start shooting down these little balls that can damage you, and on top of dealing with those, you're of course trying to dodge the boss and the absurd amounts of damage he can do as well. So uh, your best bet is to do as much damage as possible, as fast as possible, before the chaos gets involved. So try to stick to uh, his right leg. A little bit easier to dodge him from that angle. Otherwise, he keeps just throwing his shield out at you. He's going to do a big lightning slam attack here. We're going to use that to charge up and hit him hard. Right here, he's going to do another big attack. Even though we got hit, we did get a uh, nice damage in. Now, this is his one shot. Woo -hoo -hoo -hoo. Which I just barely dodged that. Don't let that hit you. Here come the chaos balls. You kind of see them, there's just tons of them. Uh, you can actually use that fountain you see over there to help avoid them. Oh god, the shield slam. Egon, get back in there. Tank him some, bruh. Oh, man. Here we go. And... Boom! One more hit, though. Fugs will not be beaten. And down goes the Dragon Slayer armor. So, for those that got overly hyped, um, not to rain on the parade, but unfortunately that was not Ornstein. As you can see here, uh, the Dragon Slayer armor controlled by the Pilgrim Butterfly, excuse me, uh, lost its master long ago, but still remembers their sporting hunts. So, they're called Pilgrim Butterflies, not Chaos Butterflies, but they are reminiscent of Chaos. Anyway, um, but with him down, we can kindle a bonfire and head on into the next area. Once again, still absolutely absurd how much damage we are doing with Fugs. Run on up. No real point to wait at the bonfire yet. Um, right and around for a chunk down here. Start finding tons and tons of Titanite chunks. Um, after the next ashes that we pick up, we can actually start buying chunks from the vendor. And we'll rest at this bonfire. We'll go on back and spend those souls. And now we are at the Grand Archives. So, very reminiscent of the uh, Archives of Dark Souls 1. A um, little bit weirder this time around, whereas the Archives in Dark Souls 1 were more of like a labyrinth of sorts. These ones, um, there's really only one time you do a, a change, if you will, of the Archive, and it's just to grab a couple items. But for the most part, this one's a lot more straightforward. Well, speak. Very well. Then hey. Farewell, Ashen One. 
All right. Now we never showed you guys what we could get with the Dancer Soul. We're going to do that now, uh, along with showing you the Dragon Slayer Armor Soul. Uh, so the Dancer Soul, you can get Soothing Sunlight, very high-end miracle you can use, or alternatively, the Dancer's Enchanted Swords. Look at the spell on those. Um, with the Dragon Slayer armor, we can get the Great Axe, which is pretty badass. I uh, can do that Bolt of Lightning with it. Or the alternative, of course, is the Dragon Slayer Great Shield. Uh, now, the Great Shield's pretty good. As you can see, 100 physicals, 95 lightning, uh, 71, 7, and 77 on the rest. Uh, it does weigh 26, though, which is really, really heavy. 26 is kind of absurd for a shield. You know, this one's 20.5. Uh, 14.5 on that. You know, just looking at some of the heavier things in the game, um, 7.5 on a great sword. Even Yorm's great machete is just 19.0. So, if you're gonna go for this shield, while it does have fantastic resistance, you are very much a, uh, a turtle with this. So you're gonna have a nice light weapon to help complement that. Um, that being said, I'm gonna be picking up his axe just because it's a 40 strength requirement, and it looks totally wow. badass. He is those that want to check out the weapon art. Pretty badass. It's no fugs, but it's pretty badass. Alright. At this point, uh, let me deposit some things real fast here. You. Uh, you, you. You, you. You, you. And we are going to head back to the Grand Archives. Now we're going to be tackling this area in uh, two episodes. Um, it's kind of lengthy, but there is a really nice kind of halfway point shortcut we can get. So for this episode, we're going to work up to that. And then the next episode, we will wrap up the archives. And then um, the episode after that, we make our way on over to Prince Lothric. We're actually not too far from the end of the game. We got, uh, after Lothric, we have an optional area, and then it's a final boss. And I think we might be able to wrap the whole thing up in 40 episodes total. So, grab the Archives key and Gotthard's Twin Swords. A really, really cool dex weapon. I'm actually considering switching over to this on my dex build. Really nice weapon. But anyway, uh, we're going to rest at the bonfire real fast. Just to get back that little bit of FP bar that we never use anyway. Now this is going to be a shortcut we're going to grab later uh, to take us to the boss. For now, just head on in and open the door. So first thing we want to do, run straight up ahead. And you'll notice another old friend here. Oh, and he's going to vanish. And that's fine. Um, so after him, let's see. We're going to go to the right platform. Get ourselves a chunk. Got more of these thralls again. Uh, we'll grab that a little bit later. We'll wait for this thrall to come on over. Nope, doesn't look like he will. Um, now there's going to be a ladder we're going to extend here a little bit later. So just remember this spot as being a shortcut. Uh, and then we're going to run up this way and hit a crystal lizard. No, you don't. Got the uh, crystal gem off of him. Now, the thing that's kind of tricky about this area, um, which is why I'm kind of backing up over here, the crystal sage that we're fighting now will teleport around. Uh, he goes to three different locations, and at each of those, he'll continually cast spells at you. So always keep an eye on the cover you have around you. Um, now, after that, let's see, turn around and go left. Okay, so we're going to go um, left here, circle around, get the Crestfallen Soul. Take out the Thrall. Um, left. Get a chunk. 
Another thrall. Uh, we're going to be messing around with them in a little bit. First, we're going to go this way. Got a Lothric Knight waiting for us, who is just out of range. Stop it. Just stay down, dude. Whoa. Oh my god. The wall clipping right there. So absurd. Dude just stabbed me through a pillar to get the kill. That was a bit ridiculous. Now, it's probably better that we died now than later, because uh, one thing I want to note now is that any time you die, until you kill the Crystal Sage, he will keep respawning. So when we run back in, Crystal Sage is going to be waiting for us again. So just be ready for it. And you are going to want to chase him and take him out because we get a, uh, a scroll from him a little bit later. You can see that time we managed to get about half of his health down, which is pretty good. Uh, that'll certainly help later. Let's go uh, pay our knight friend a visit. Kill this guy. He shouldn't be over here. You spent two... Oh, come on! That was totally a backstab. Actually, we're just going to roll into here. Now let's heal up. Make him come into this room. The shield bashing is getting rather annoying, friend. I'll have to ask you to die. Grab the refined gem. Get the crisp chime. Pretty cool. You can cast both uh, sorceries and miracles with it. Go over here and grab a chunk. Now you can see a little item over there. That's one of the items that we're going to get later when we uh, begin to rotate objects around. I believe so. No, never mind. That's one we drop down to, actually. Um, so from here, let me just look over at my list, make sure I'm not missing anything. Okay, yes, we want to go up here, get a Titanite scale. And then we're going to kill the Waxmen. So they're not particularly difficult. Um, the ones that have fire on their heads, they can do soul darts, as you saw. Uh, aside from that, they'll just kind of vomit wax at you and poke you with their daggers. And now we're going to wax ourselves up. Wax on, baby. Now, it looks pretty silly, but trust me, you're going to want the wax. Um, so in this next room, we got two crystal lizards we're going to want to take out. You'll understand the purpose behind the wax in just a moment here. So you see these little hands, and if you are not waxed, um, these hands will cause a uh, curse in addition to doing damage to you. So get your wax on. That way you don't have to worry about them. Is it up here? No, there's the soul. Usually easier to run through here with the torch. Um, obviously, because of my weight limitations, that's not really a possibility. Um, now we're going to head up the stairs. Ah, so much crap here. Um, another wax man. Two wax men, actually. One that is here. Pick up the Titanite scale. And one that is right here. And we will now kick down the shortcut. Alright, so with the ladder down, run over, grab the chunk. And now we're going to actually run and get a lizard. Then we're going to go... Oh, God. Wow, I really fluked out there. Um, so run straight past out here, get the homeward bones. Now, we're going to go up from behind 
and hit the uh, crystal sage from up here, and then we'll go grab the loot that you guys saw. Did we actually just kill him? I think we did. That is fantastic. Will you drop your scroll here? You will! The crystal scroll, very nice. Stop that, please. Alright. I was actually curious to see if I'd be able to kill him during the second encounter using the Fugs. Uh, the other two times I've, I've fought him, I had to wait until the third encounter. Okay. Drop Titanite Chunk, thank you. So drop down to there to get that. Um, and we might actually be able... Yeah, I think we can get this now. Let's there we go. Ah, Avalyn. Sounds like my cat is trying to fight her way into the pantry for treats. She's not satisfied with the two full bowls of food laying out. No, she needs those treats. So, another crystal lizard over there. Uh, we're going to be getting him in just a moment. But first, we're going to go around this way. Get ourselves another chunk. As well as rewax. Ooh, look at that. Wax just wore off, too. Perfect time. Now, I'm not sure what it is, but you can hear a humming. And it sounds like Onion Bro, but everything that I have seen would suggest that his quest is long and done by now. Um, so I'm not sure what that humming is. It's one of the few things I haven't figured out. Maybe it's a, a false wall somewhere that I just wasn't able to find. Anyway, go up here. Take out the thralls. That was supposed to be a plunging attack, but whatever. You're dead anyway. Titanite scale? Yes. Okay. And false wall. Trying to fight them with a slow weapon is not easy. Oh, man. They're just such a fast enemy. But we gotta kill them. Killed the other Frost Knights up until now. And this one in particular, we get the full armor set. So, hooray. You can now be a Frost Knight of your own. Hoping that was a false wall that would lead me to the humming. I really want to discover the source of the humming. Anyway, go over here and we get the Kamehameha Blast. Soul Stream. Wait, the humming just stopped. Were you humming? Hmm, maybe this weird dead NPC was what was humming. Because now that we have Soul Stream, the humming has stopped. That is odd. Anyway, so from here, run back on out. Now, we did just fight our way past a bunch of stuff. Um, that being said, if you... Ooh, Scholar's Road. Look at all the loot you guys are dropping for me. Um, if you were feeling low on Estus, um, there is a shortcut we can get right here, which we're going to do right now. Roll on down. Um, and if the Crystal Sage teleported again, I should mention, uh, this is where you will fight him. Right there. 
But we're going to go hit the shortcut, grab a few more items, and then wrap up in just a second here. So take this on down. Uh, make sure you do go all the way down. You can't just jump on the elevator for the shortcut. Uh, there's going to be a door we need to unlock once we get down. Go over here. And you can see this is the entrance room. So, at this point we'll head back on up. Um, a couple other things that we want to snatch. Including a Titanite Lizard and a Lothric Knight that we want to kill. Um, so that's going to be where we're going shortly. That's kind of the upper half of this area. For that, we're going to run across the bridge here. Um, we'll go over here for a Shriving Stone. You can hear the humming again. Um, this ladder will take you up to the other platform we just dropped down off of. I can hear the humming still. It wasn't the guy reading the book. wonder who was doing the humming. Alright, so after killing the knight, I proceeded to run around convinced there was a false wall because I couldn't remember. Um, and it's not a false wall, but actually a lever that I somehow completely overlooked, which tells me uh, this is going to be the end of today's recordings. Um, so anyway, hit that. We'll get our scholar ring here. Um, from that, we're going to run this way. We're going to dunk our heads real fast into the wax. Please get off of me. We'll just bring them outside. Since they want to be all uppity. So, um, obviously, I basically... I had finished recording that episode, and then I went back because I overlooked this stuff. Um, but yeah, the lever right here, you end up pulling that, and it will move a bookcase right down there. It's kind of in the center of the screen, right, right where the wax on my guy's head is. Um... For some reason, I just I got confused. I thought that that lever had impacted getting to this wall. But yeah, so use that. You're going to want quick access to that wax, and then use that lever over there. And then from there, we will go here. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> you would drop down right here to kill a crystal lizard. We already did that, of course. And then you're going to go this way. And around the corner. Here's the bookcase that has been lowered. And back here in the chest, we have a Titanite slab. So at that point, you are pretty much done with the first half of the archives. Um, from here, I would suggest heading on back to the bonfire, getting your health all nice and up. No, that is not the way I wanted to go. I wanted to go this way. Not quite as labyrinthy as before, but uh, still... A little tricky sometimes. Roll on down. Go away. You can die. And we're going to head on back. Um, so obviously I had a lot more souls uh, before I did the video edit over. I had actually gone and spent those souls and then uh, hopped over to my dex build to confirm what I was missing with the, uh, the issue of the wall. So uh, of course at this point make sure to go back, spend any souls you have. Upgrade a weapon to plus 10 since we have our first slab. And then uh, following with the next episode, we will resume at the top of the elevator and take on the upper paths and the roofs of the archives. So thanks for coming on by, and we will see you guys next time with more Dark Souls 3.